Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 117 of the RRBG podcast. Please check out the Patreon page. Go to patreon.com slash RRBG and support the podcast today. Every little bit counts, and you can get yourself some exclusive content, like the interviews I did at Psycho Las Vegas with Andrew WK and Enslaved, as well as any video content that I'll be putting out in the future. Check it out, patreon.com slash RRBG, and support the podcast. In this episode, I talked to Greg Kubaki of the band Car Bomb. We talk about their upcoming release, Morgil, out on Holy Roar Records. We talk about their writing process. We talk about their live show process. We talk about tours. We share some stories about our homies. And we talk a little bit about beer. I had a great conversation with him, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Please check out the album. It's one of the most interesting music I've heard in a long, long time. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Cheers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the RRBG podcast. I'm here with Greg Kubaki. Am I saying that right? Kubaki? Uh, Kubaki, yeah, close enough. Kubaki. Kubaki. All right. Greg Kubaki of Carbomb. Uh, how you doing, brother? Good, man. How you doing? Doing good. Made some coffee for this. I've, uh, I've had a long, long week. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> trying to stay away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're, uh, we're back from tour for a month now. We've been all been trying to catch up with work, and we're all in the same boat as you, so I feel you. Yeah, you guys uh, recently released, uh, or wait, is it the 27th yet? I'm, I have it, so I'm confused by this. Okay, it's the 20th. <laughs> I have the album, but it's not out yet. All right, so <laughs> September 27th, you guys have M- Morgiel? Yeah. It's out on Holy Roar Records. Dude, uh, question number one. What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We've wow. been trying to figure that out for a long time, but we can't seem to figure it out. <laughs> I love yeah. the album. I'm, I'm going to lead with that. I love the album. Uh, I was listening to the promo they sent me, and I had it like blasting in the, in the living room. And uh, my fiance is walking around, and she just stops, and she's like, what are you listening to? <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's Car Bomb. She's like... It, I don't know how I feel right now. I'm like, yeah, I know it's, <laughs> it's. I don't. I I know that I really enjoy this, uh, and it, it's exciting and interesting. Like I, I, it, it's filling a void that has been left behind by Dillinger Escape Plan. I think. Mm, yeah. Because yeah. That that like sense of I don't know what's gonna happen in this song. I'm I'm waiting to see what's happening and where how how much heavier can it get? Uh, you know, out of nowhere we get. M- melodic singing vocals that you don't expect you know like it's super heavy uh super toned down you know, you know chugging explosions and then you get these beautiful melodic uh vo- vocals in the background so what is where is this all coming from like what is the theme for you guys like is this is it more of like a psychological thing like i, I don't know i'm trying to figure it out because it puts me in a weird place i don't know i mean we're all kind of tuned to this type of music, I guess. Like, I mean, like you were mentioning Dillinger and like, yeah, I miss those guys to death. Cause you would, whenever they put out a record, that was like, you know, four months of analyzing every song and trying to figure mm. out all the rhythmic patterns and all the weird harmonic stuff that they did. Like it was always really fun to sort of dissect all of their little tricks. Uh-huh. And there's not a lot of that anymore. Like Meshuga is like still a band that does that a lot, which is like, you know, Every time they put out a record, it's, you know, half a year of trying to count to it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So we yeah. just we naturally just go for that. And as far as different textures, we just rip off our influences a lot. And we try to pull from as many different uh, bands and artists as we can from different genres and see what kind of compositions we can make. Yeah, man. It's... Uh, I. <sighs> I got to say, you're doing a great job. And and obviously it's showing. I mean, it feels like the band is now getting more recognition than it has. Um, You know, your name is everywhere. Every time I look around, like, oh, oh, there's a cool band on tour. Oh, check it out. They're playing with Car Mom. (laughs) And then, like, the the, you guys drop in those really interesting videos. They're, like, kind of – they remind me of the old school – uh, visualizer videos that you would get with like uh, like when you were listening to music back in the day on your computer and it's just like crazy patterns 
Yeah, yeah. Those old school Windows NT screensavers, yeah. Yeah, dude. Is is that kind of the inspiration for those videos, or what was the, the, the thought there? Yeah. Well, we always think of things visually. Like, when we write music, we think of it in a visual sense of what sort of sensations you get. Or what, what's that? What's, what's the, uh, when you... When you see music, what is that called? Oh man, damn! I, I forget. Yeah, I'm not going to try to say it <laughs> work because I'll butcher it. But um, so there's always a visual component to it, and um, plus we're really influenced by uh, like mid to late '90s Warp Records album artwork from One Republic. Like they were a design studio, I think in London. Don't quote me on that, but they're in the UK somewhere. And they just always did like the coolest shit as far as like Apex Twin covers and Autechre covers and Square Pusher artwork and all that stuff. So growing up on that, we sort of like to pay homage to that with our artwork. Since you know all the other bands have like you know evil metal shit, we figured let's not do that. Let's do something else. <laughs> no, no tree branches and uh, like fire and some kind of uh, demonic. Not figure. yet, but maybe. Yeah, maybe later on we'll have some witches or something. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh it, so you guys uh been touring with uh, animals as leaders in europe um how was that like how how is, how's the audience when it comes to the screaming because i know like animals as leaders has a lot of that really cool trying to figure out the music and and see where they're going with it but there's not a lot there's no vocals so uh some of those fans like some of the like the berkeley students that just go check out uh you know super talent uh, they might get turned off by the screaming. Is that the case, or was everybody like super into it? No, everybody's super into it. But I mean, we always gauge because usually people who have never heard us before, they won't necessarily know how to react. Like you were saying, your fiance didn't know how to react. <laughs> That's a very common response for our music, which we're fine. You know, we're we're used to that. Yeah. But we always gauge if, if anybody leaves the room. Like if the room is half empty, if it starts full and then it's half empty, that's not a great show. But right, their right. audience is really receptive to it. And they're all really cool and really nice. And we tried to talk to as many of them as possible after the show. And it was fun, man. And Animals as Leaders were incredible to watch for two months straight. And just oh, yeah. trying to pick their brains and how they write music and how they practice. It's, it's very intimidating and inspiring at the same time. I can imagine, you know, they always say, uh, it, there's an old Cuban saying that's basically, you know, tell me who you're hanging out with and I'll tell you who you are. And it's, it's like that. Like you're, you're, you're picking up that vibe from them. You're learning things, you're sharing ideas. Like it, it can only help you to like, it'll make you a better, you know, overall person, not just musician, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And just to see how, I mean, I think back in the day we, came from more of a metal background and things were a little more like raw and you know, I, don't, I don't want to say the word punk because we weren't a punk band but sort of in that sort of aesthetic as far as just like Pantera. we're doing everything ourselves and fuck everybody else right all right okay. and uh now just to see how other people do it especially them because they do things very differently from everybody else and i don't know we're just learning things left and right from them and it's it's been awesome yeah, dude, mentioning that, I, I saw that my buddy sent me, I, uh, I let him know, because uh, every once in a while I'll announce who I'm talking to, if anybody had any like questions or thoughts or whatever, to ask you, and my buddy sent me uh, the Why Do We Do This documentary, mm. and dude, it you know seeing the journey of, of the band uh, was very, it hit close to home, so I was in a band for 10 years, and it was the exact same scenario. It was like, oh, go on tour. It's yeah, a shitty exactly. tour and fucking, you know, getting screwed over by promoters and, uh, you know, or show up to a venue that's scheduled and it doesn't exist. And <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> <laughs> that whole story, like watching you guys progress and, uh, you know, looking back at that, like you guys, I, like I was saying, I think you're at your highest level you've been so far in terms of popularity. Um, so the, far, yeah, sure. And I, I think every band does that. I mean, you know, we hear stories from Gojira all the time about, you know, all the stuff that they went through and, you know, everybody has to pay their dues. Maybe it's a little different now with social media and YouTube because you can sort of get a following before you hit the road. But that also doesn't work sometimes either. Sometimes, you know, YouTube plays don't necessarily translate to people at shows. Right. So I think it's just normal. I think, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but we still had like a lot on on those runs, even though, you know, even like the one, the tourist one is that gazebo we played where it was 
<laughs> us in this band called Last Chance to Reason, and there was mm. ten people in this like outdoor like park under a gazebo, and there was you know we, there was more people in the bands than there were in the audience, so we actually just set up around the audience and like did a song, like, we did a song, and then they would do a song, and yeah, nobody was there, but it was a lot of fun. So as as you know, hard as that those shows were, it still had this like charm to it, which is really cool. Well, for sure, man. I mean, I, I have fond memories of those, you know, house shows and uh, uh, festivals in people's backyards and shit like that that you just, you know, yeah. get booked on. Uh, and they're always fun. I mean, it's not <laughs> look at you see footage and you're like, what the hell, man? What are you guys doing? But but yeah, <laughs> it, it's that's what I guess musicians. That's what you want to do. That's what you have to do. You have to go out there and play. And no matter what, like I, and I applaud you guys because you guys stuck to your sound. You didn't really change in order to be start getting more success it was just you guys just kept doing it and doing it better and louder and with better equipment and i don't know i gotta i give you props for that cool man thanks yeah i mean yeah we, got, uh, i don't know we we try not to bullshit ourselves with um i don't know like we all have pretty decent bullshit detectors for music uh-huh. and uh we know if something is doesn't really feel 100 percent us or if we're maybe trying too hard or something like that. So we do get a lot of that stuff, but it usually gets axed (laughs) and we just stick with the raw stuff. Yeah. uh, I I wrote here, there's a question my buddy wanted me to ask you and it's that, you know, your music has always involved a lot of this uh, unorthodox or no unorthodox techniques, uh, you know, pick scraping and the harmonics and odd measures and all that. And, uh, you know, it wasn't nearly as prevalent in the prior albums like Centralia or, the, I don't even know. How do you say that name? W, 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 uh, arrow. Oh, we call it, um, we call it W click W, or you can call it the waveform album if you want. Okay. The waveform album. There we go. So yeah, yeah the, those type of things weren't as prevalent before. Uh, so what kind of pushed you towards getting into this, uh, like punishment by guitar t- type of sound? Huh? I guess it's something I've always been striving for in my playing as far as trying to make it like make it less like a guitar and more like a, like a electronic music type of sound type of thing, I guess. Like how Apex Twin, like, you know, changes his sounds all the time. And mm-hmm. Art Checker are the kings of like, you know, sound design. They do, they've been doing like stuff, you know, 10 years ahead of its time for the past 20 years. And uh, just trying to, I don't know, that stuff always kind of sounded heavier to me than just regular metal guitars. And, not that I want to play synths or do anything like that, because that's not as fun as playing a guitar. So it's right. trying to find that spot of, you know, how can I make like a screechy sound, but still have it come through an amp. And I don't know. It's just always trying to find little, little uh, hidden gems in the axe effects or trying to program things in a way that it's not really intended to, to try to get different things happening. So you're like a big gearhead. Like, do you go to Nam and just look at all the different developers of, of sound, the pedals, and all of that, trying to you know discover something new, or or do you kind of just figure, really. work with what you got? <laughs> yeah, I try to work with like what I got because I think it's really easy to get lost in different types of gear. It's like when um, I don't know. It's like if you're trying, like if you're a computer programmer and you try to learn twenty different languages, like you'll be okay at all those different languages, but if you focus on one or two you'll be, you know, way more proficient on those and you'll be able to uh, work on things a little bit faster and get into a flow state. And I've been using the Axe Effects for about maybe eight years or something like that. I think not the, not the very first Axe Effects, but I got like one of the older versions of the first Axe Effects. I think it's called the Axe Effects Ultra. Hmm. And just been messing with it ever since and trying to find ways to get new sounds out of it. Uh, I mean, I like pedals. I mean, every guitar player likes pedals, but I only have one on my pedal board. I usually just use the x Okay. And so, like, uh, the, all the – it sounds like a whammy pedal the, the, when it goes, like, down to, down an octave. So that's not a whammy. That's more uh, the x effect that's doing that? When sure. Doing yeah, it has shifting? a pitch shifter in it. Yeah. Okay. It has actually has two pitch shifters in it, and they have different modes. So they have, um, you know, the Boss PS3 uh, crystal – echo thing which sounds amazing they have like a whammy type emulator they have ones where you can throw you know two you can throw four pitch shifters at the same time at a sound which is a lot of fun like there's one part on uh 
a new song in Mordial where there are eight pitch shifters going on at once and then they merge into one tone and then they spread out again. Mm. So you can do just weird stuff if you like, if you, if you dive into the act effects and what it can do. I mean, I still wish they had more stuff added to it, but it still offers way more sort of bells and whistles than a lot of other things do. Hmm. Is this a, you know, for live shows, is this something that's programmed in so that the switch, you know, the switching around to different effects, uh, or are you doing it live with like a pedal type of thing, like a switch pedal? So I use a computer to kind of merge the axe effects patches and the lights together using this program called Max MSP by Cycling 74. It's this, um, it's sort of like a black, like just this empty blank canvas, black box type of thing where you can literally just create wherever you want with this program. So we take uh, Elliot's drum kicks and tom hits and snares and convert that into light data and then i have uh expression pedals hooked up on my pedal board which control the axe effects and um this other momentary switch that actually cycles between patches so i don't have to dance too much around the pedal essentially i just hit this one button that goes to the next step in the set and then the expression pedals control whatever effects i'm using for that particular song Man, that sounds. That makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. It sounds like a lot of work uh, to to get it down, you know, right. I always have issues when it comes to to programming stuff like that and keeping it, you know, linked together without something going wrong. Like I don't know, I'm I'm very old in in my type of uh, play where I, I have to it has to be more something in my control. I don't know. I don't know. It's a psychological thing. Like I'm sure the computers got it right. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a couple of bugs. I totally agree with what you're saying because there is a couple of times where, like, on the last tour, uh, there was an issue. We had, like, a USB hub hooked up between a couple of different things. Yeah. And it was causing Max to crash, so I couldn't change patches and do any uh, effects during the middle, like, just randomly in the middle of songs. So. Oh, and man. I can't play guitar, so, you know, I can't do it. <laughs> it just doesn't sound like anything. <laughs> so, uh but yeah, so it it can be nerve wracking at times. But we're usually we're pretty good with that stuff. It is a lot of prep work, but I can I imagine. Think it's still yeah. Than, yeah, I think it's still a lot easier than trying to lug like a big amp and all these pedals and have all these different cables and or batteries or you know or extra, extra band members. Your, <laughs> extra, yeah, exactly right. You have to get like two guitar techs to set up everything, and I couldn't imagine doing what I do with a pedal board. That's That'd be way too much dancing around, man. Yeah, you'll be like the dude from uh, Minus the Bear. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, Battles. They have, a, they have a lot of gear, too. Yeah, man. The dude, I remember seeing the dude from Minus the Bear, and at one point, he just like flipped his guitar to his back and was just like dancing on the pedals, like literally a dance. And uh, I was like, okay, that's cool. It's part of the show. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So uh, let me ask you in, in terms of the having you've had uh, Joe Duplantier of, of Gojira on the albums before. Uh, is he guesting on this at all? Mm. The only guest we have for this record is Courtney Swain from Bet Me. Okay. Uh, she's a she's, both, she's the lead singer in that band. And she does a little thing in XO, XOY at the end. And it's phenomenal. It's really, yeah, really yeah. cool. It's nice yeah. to have it's nice to have like, you know, a female, like finally on the record. Like we've really been trying to get that for a while. And, uh, and she, the, the whole bet me crew are just fantastic, fun people. We love those guys and their music is incredible. So shout out to bet me. Nice. And, um, so it's really fun to have that Joe, unfortunately he's been working on the new Gojira record at silver mm. So he wasn't able to do any guest vocals or produce this one with me, okay. but he did offer, advice whenever he had time and you know he's he's always full of awesome insight and ideas as far as how to record things and how to approach songwriting and all that stuff so we gave him he has he's a creative consultant on this record and uh, along with uh, his engineer johan meyer who is uh an engineering consultant or recording consultant they didn't actually push any buttons or do anything like that but they were a huge influence on the way the record was shaped Hmm. And how did that relationship come about? Was it just touring back in the day? Because I know he was in that documentary as well that I was watching. Yeah. So we did a one-off show in Arizona with, um, it was a festival with, I think it was Soulfly or a Cavalera Conspiracy. It was when Igor and Max first played together 
mm. since uh, Sepultura broke up. Okay. And Joe was actually playing bass in that band, which is crazy. Wow. <laughs> and Johnny, yeah, right? And this is a, I, I forget what year. It's like 2000, I want to say 9 or 2008. I could be wrong about that. Uh, Johnny knows. So Johnny, the bass player, he actually uh, was hanging out with Joe, and they became great friends. And then from there, we did a tour with them. I think 2009 was the first time we toured with them in the States. And then Joe and Mario moved to Brooklyn. So now we have a studio with them, uh, Silver Chord Studios in Brooklyn. Nice. So, yeah, it's just like, it's weird because, like, it's their family now. It's, it's pretty wild how, um, I know, we're always at the studio and just hanging out. And it's, it's weird how their, their trajectory is just, you know, ridiculous. Yeah, they've been every every album is just bigger and bigger. I I went and I saw them. Uh, I saw them in Denver at the Red Rocks with Opeth and uh, oh, Devin Townsend. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said that show was soul crushing. <laughs> Dude, it was ridiculous. Because, yeah, he said it was. He said it was fun, but Red Rock is the one where it's all there's. You can't stand up. It's all seats, right? Yeah, it was. A, the crowd was a little yeah. awkward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's hard. How do you get into metal if there are seats? Like we saw. Um, like we saw a Slipknot at Jones Beach a couple of weeks ago, and they're dead a pit area in the front, which is great. But then the rest of its seats, it's like I can't, I can't get into this. Like I'm trying to <laughs> like move around here. I can't do it without a chair in my butt. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it was it was a vacation trip to Denver, and they have uh, recreational. They had recreational marijuana at the time, and I uh, hmm. partook in what I would consider to be too many gummies, and. Um, ah. Like, I just, I didn't know any better. I was just like, oh, you know what? I don't know. This, this looks good. Like a good amount. I, <laughs> wow. like, I, I don't know what I'm getting myself into, whatever. And then we go see the show and yeah, it was a little awkward because the crowd was, everybody was sitting, but I felt like I was just floating above the crowd the entire time. <laughs> and then it was just, you know, their, their show, they have fire. And I'm like feeling the fire. I just I started freaking out like, oh, my God, I'm burning to a crisp. <laughs> um, but yeah, it sounds it like a, you took like the right amount, actually. Yeah, right. No, it was a, it was a fun time. It was a great time. Um, I definitely would love to go back there one day and not be on however many milligrams I was. 200, I, I think. I don't know. It's too many. But uh, yeah, going going back also to that documentary, I saw, you know, you mentioned already The Last Chance to Reason. Uh, I know I saw them with Michael Lesser, who's now in the Contortionists. Is uh, yep. do you have you guys toured with the Contortionists before? We haven't. We actually tried. Uh, so we had like a week off between uh, Brutal Assault and Arc Tangent. Those are two festivals in Europe, and they were on tour with Azusa, which is Liam's new oh, band. Yep. Liam Wilson from Dillinger, and that band is awesome. We love that band. So we tr almost made it where we were touring with those guys for a week, but it didn't turn out. But uh, Frank, I'm friends with Robbie. He's really cool. Um, oh, and they're nice. doing some amazing shit. And yeah, so hopefully, you know, sometime in the near future, we'll be able to tour with those guys. That'd be cool. Hell yeah. I think Azusa would be a good pair for that tour as well. I mean, uh, they, oh, also, they yeah, have I a very interesting wait. sound too. So Yeah, we saw them play. They, the first time I saw them was at Arc Tangent. And they were just nuts, man. They're so thrashy and spacey and weird. And like they're very heavily influenced by like mid 70s jazz, which I never would have guessed. So there's a lot of just weird chord choices and rhythmic stuff that's going on. It's really cool. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah. I, I, they should bring that out here to, to California. I haven't been able to see it live yet. I know uh, last time I hung out with Liam, he showed me a little bit of it, but I, I want to see it live, you know? <laughs> It's cool. It's really cool. Uh, let me, let me, shout somebody, I'm sorry. Sorry. I said shout out to Azusa. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of my, uh, uh, friends asked, uh, Meshuggah had the violent sleep of reasons, uh, recorded, uh, live. Is that something that mm -hmm. you guys would consider doing? Cause it's such, I know it's gotta be difficult cause there's like you mentioned before, a lot of uh, stuff that needs to be programmed for effects and stuff like that. But, have you considered it? No way. No way. <laughs> <laughs> no way. All right. No, it's, it, it's weird because the way we write is sort of piecemeal. We write in like little bits and move things around a lot and Cubase and Pro Tools. And the song is, when we're recording a song, we're still writing it too, in a way. 
Mm. Like, especially for Mordial, like we actually, there's actually like 10% more of music in the songs originally, but we really tried to like pare things down and make things really compact and uh, short this time around. So we, we threw away a lot of filler, just like, you know, not playing things for as long and trying to switch to the next part faster. So, um, yeah, but trying to do that live, like, I don't know. I think we'd have to do, we'd have to write, make sure everything is written first and then go for it. And I don't think that's really how we write because we're always thinking of ways we can change the song even as it's being recorded. Okay. <laughs> All right, and we're not, and we're not as good as Meshuggah, man. Like they are just monsters live, and I don't think, I don't think we can pull that off. Where like everything, all the the drum parts and their, all the guitar stuff is synced up. Like that's just, like when I heard they recorded that live, I was like, no way, because that's one of my favorite records ever put out, and it sounds so freaking tight. Yeah, no, it's an incredible record. I remember just sitting. I was, I listened to the whole thing in my car because I refused to stop it. Like I got to where I was going and I'm like, <laughs> I'm not stopping this. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here and listen to the rest of it. Um, oh, is yeah, that, it have you toured with them before? Is that something you'd want to do? Did. I'm sure. We did. So we did, um, we did uh, two weeks with them in Europe. I think I want to say 2015 or 2014. Mm. It was on their 25th anniversary tour. It was right before Violent Sleep. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. It was really cool to see them tear it up every night. Huh, I think I went to that tour, but you guys didn't come out here with them. No, we haven't toured the States with them yet. We're dying to, though. We would love to throw down with them in the States. We I haven't really that. been to the West Coast in, man, I think it's been like something like eight years or something like that. It's been a long time. Wow. Yeah, I mean, shit, yeah. get out here. I want to see you guys. <laughs> We're working on it. We're, dude, we're trying really hard. We're working on it. Uh, are, are you we still... have a couple of I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just saying we have a couple of meetings coming up. What was your question? Oh, I was going to say, are you still doing, because uh, in the documentary they show you, you know, working a lot with the lighting and programming the visual part of the show. Are you still involved in that or have you guys brought someone on to help or how's that going for you? We don't really know what we're going to do moving forward with it. So we're probably going to try to do a whole new version of the bottom part of the show, mm. like the stuff that's actually on the floor and that syncs up to the drums. And then for the Convergence tour with Periphery and Animals as Leaders, we actually had Phil Grasso from As I Lay Dying doing the top lights. Oh. And it really made this like awesome combination because he, he knew the song. So he was programming things to all the like the laser effects and the drum fills and all that stuff and was just killing it. And to have that mixed with the bottom thing was like really, really impactful. So I think it's a combination of both where we're going to have to try to figure out what we're going to do ourselves for the bottom and try to find someone for the top part of the house life. Oh, well, that's cool about Phil, man. I, I, that dude's a homie. Uh, Phil, Dude, we, he's awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Phil and I, he's Phil, so myself cool. and uh, Adam D went to uh, go see Mastodon and uh, Primus in San Diego. And uh, oh, yeah, we got I, I just remember at one point I look in my pocket. I don't remember how it happened. I had way too much to drink as it happens when you hang out with Adam D. And uh, I had Phil's credit card in my pocket. <laughs> Oh shit! And like he went home and everything, and I had called him. I'm like, dude, I have your credit card. He's like, oh shit! <laughs> He's like, yeah, just, I'm already in bed naked. Just leave it like by my car or something. I'm like, what? No. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, it's cool that he. You have no I, idea how. It I have no, up. I don't remember now. I might. I think he might have left it in like. At a, at a place where we were at and just left it uh, with a tab open or he dropped it. I don't remember. I just know that it was in my pocket at one point. And I was just huh. like, man, I got to get this back to you. Dude, next time that happens, just buy some shit, man. Just get, <laughs> send me some stuff. Bye, right, man. I need some guitars and stuff. Yeah, just be like, hey, man, sorry. It's uh, business, business, <laughs> business expenses. <laughs> well, it's all right. Now. It's, fine. it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... What would be your fantasy tour out here in the U.S.? Like out in the West, like the full U.S. run, what would your top three bands be? Oh, geez. Um, that's a good question. I think we'd like to do a headlining run, actually. We've been talking about that a lot. So that's definitely in the cards, I think, next year. Okay. We're hoping that's going to happen. 
because that's a lot of fun. We did that for the first time in Europe, uh, I think it was two years ago, and we were surprised at how much fun it was. So we wanted to do that. It could be anybody. Like, I know we really want to tour with Deftones. We really want to tour with uh, Tool and, you know, Metallica is like a moon shot, but that would be cool. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, and McSugar again. I mean, we, we only toured with them once, so we'd love to hit the road with them again. Very nice. Very nice. What's the plan? Huh? No, go ahead. No, I was going to say, what's the plan uh, for the next? This tour is Animals as Leaders in Periphery that you mentioned. So is there any other ones that you're looking into that kind of look like they're going to happen after that? Or So that was a tour we did two years ago with Animals as Leaders in Periphery. We don't have anything booked yet, but we have things in the works. So mm, okay. as soon as we know, we're going to be uh, announcing stuff. But uh, so far, the only thing we have booked is Euroblast uh, next week which is uh, a festival in Cologne, Germany. Uh, we're headlining the last day there. And then we're doing a record release show in Brooklyn at the Kingsland, which is like this awesome like pizzeria, bar, music venue place. And uh, that's it. And then we're going to rest for the rest of the year and then see what comes up next year. Okay, okay. How's, uh, how, is, how has it been getting this album together with Holy Roar since you guys have usually been independent? Well, we still are. So okay. we're in the States and in the rest of the world. We still, it's still Johnny doing all of that stuff. He's like the king of logistics and shipping things out. And he has like his own PO box or, or uh, zip code or whatever. He just, he's always shipping stuff out. And, okay. um, and then so Holy Roar is just for Europe. So it sucked how much like our fans have to pay for like, you know, CD is like 10 bucks and then they got to pay $12 shipping or something like that. Mm. That's just ridiculous. So uh, I met Justine. Uh, I'm a big fan of employed to serve and I met her at download back in June and we just, it, it just started from there. Like we had a conversation and then a couple of emails later we had to deal with them for them to do distrib uh, distribution for us. And, uh, yeah, it's been great so far. Really, really cool. And um, yeah, we couldn't be happier to work with him. That's good. That's good to hear, man. I, yeah, it's. I, I saw the name of the label. I was like, hmm, maybe. Because I know, I think Rolo Tomasi releases through them. I, I know I've seen the name before. Yeah, they have some stuff through them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they have an awesome roster of like awesome hardcore shit and metal shit. So it's, it's nice to be part of. Every time I go to their site, I'm like, what's that band? And then I hear it, I'm like, Jesus Christ, how have I not heard this before? Yeah, <laughs> yeah Roll to Tomasi really was a nice surprise it. for me because I, I had not heard them before. And I think I heard one of their earlier songs, but their sound has changed a lot over the years. And it's yeah, got, it's exactly that song, uh, after, yeah, that Aftermath song is really, really awesome. Uh, we yeah. saw them play at Radar and the, somewhere else, I forget. But yeah, they just super tight, like super emotional impactful like heavy it was really really cool very nice uh for you personally do you have w any time to do any kind of hobbies outside of music and you know getting stuff ready for the band like do you are you into anything else like uh comics or beer because i know you guys are big fans of of dave witty and i know you've done like a you did like a split oh, yeah. right you, did you do a split with them yeah, we did it with um, uh, Burned by, by the, the Sun. sun back yeah. the, oh, my God. Yeah, he's great. We love all that. Uh, we're big fans of, like, Human Remains. That band is nice. ridiculous. Yeah, they're sick. Yeah, Witty's uh, one of like, my favorite I'm, people, man. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. Johnny's really good. And Johnny and Elliot are really good friends with him. I, you know, I'm acquaintances with him. I don't know him super, super well as, like, mm. those guys do. But, uh, yeah, I'm a big, big fan of his. Nice. But, as far as hobbies, though, not really, because this is kind of the hobby. Like, we do, we all have day jobs. Oh, okay. So whenever we have a spare time to do anything, it's usually for this. I uh, see, I see. Yeah, besides that, nothing much. I just like to hang out. Uh, I do the artwork for the band, too, so I do artwork on the side just for fun and listen to a lot of music and hang out by the pool, and that's about <laughs> it. Very cool, man. So you do all the artwork. Is that all rendered on the computer? Uh, do you do also, you know, hand like painting or drawing or anything like that? Not in a long time. So I used to. Uh, I actually went to school to, uh, at Philadelphia's uh, College of Art. It's called the University of the Arts now. Okay. And uh, I studied illustration, but I wasn't really that good. And uh, it just takes too long. Like doing stuff <laughs> by hand takes 
forever. And like it's paint, so it's like really uh, fickle and hard to control. I'd much rather just do stuff on the computer where you can, you know, there's an undo button if you screw up and you can save multiple copies of your work and sort of pick like one of your favorite ones. And Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it is definitely easier to use. Um, and the technology has gotten to that point. Like my girl has one of those uh, Microsoft surfaces with the pen and you can get some pretty interesting detail if you do decide to like manually, you know, input something in there. Sure. And there's so many different apps now. I mean, I haven't really like dove in too much of those, but a friend of mine does. And there's just so much stuff that I want to try out whenever I have some free time. So it's pretty exciting to see like where, especially like on Instagram, like there's so many people doing like amazing work in the graffiti world and in the digital world. And even like in motion graphics and in the, even the lighting installation, like it's, it's really inspiring to see so much great artwork out there and, trying to mimic it and trying to come up with something that's cool. Now the artwork itself is, it's a good representation of the sound of the band. It's very abstract, very crazy. Like there's a bunch of different colors and shapes and, and the music itself, you know, like I mentioned in the beginning, it's, it, it, it brings up this like anxiety almost. It's almost anxiety inducing. Like I'm sitting there, I'm just nervous. Like I'm, I'm like, what's happening? What's happening next? Like, where are they going with this? And it gets heavier. And, and, and you know what I mean? Like, uh, is there something that is influencing this in terms of, of uh, mental states? Are you into psychedelics? Like, what is it that's, that you, you draw inspiration from for these, like, you know, these rhythm patterns and, and this artwork? Like, do you suffer from anxiety and, 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 or anything crazy like that? Or do you have, have you had uh, out-of-body experiences? Really. No, I get anxious when I hear, like, really boring music. Like, that <laughs> drives me nuts. <laughs> Uh, you just want to run out of the room (laughs) oh my god it drives me insane but um no i don't know i I, there's really no we're just we just like that kind of stuff i I mean it's it's such a it's not a great answer but it's really the truth like this is the kind of stuff we like listening to like i guess when we listen to like something that's a little more mathy for lack of a better term Mm. like it's not really so surprising for us because we're just constantly always playing in odd times so it's always fun to see how other bands use it like it's always like i was talking about before like it's always interesting to see how mashuga does what they do and how they just pull so much mileage out of you know this one simple idea but they seem to like find all these new ways of like these new impressions or these new like heaviness that they've never reached before and uh we just tried to do the same thing like we only have like a handful of tricks but we try to just mix it up as, <laughs> as differently as we can for each other well, then, I mean, that's Does good. That make sense? It makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. You know, yeah. you just, you hear stuff like that. Like when I, like with Dillinger, like I, I've gotten to know all the guys and after you know them and get to know their personality a little bit, you kind of understand where all this is coming from too. Like I know Greg has a lot that he deals with and, uh, you know, I know Ben likes to keep things pretty, pretty spastic, but you know, it, it makes sense once you know the personalities and, you know, I haven't really met you guys. So that's kind of why I'm just, I'm trying to dig deep, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I hear yeah. So, There's not much to dig through, I think, especially with that. Cause we're, I mean, it, it sounds weird, but like playing car bomb songs is kind of calming in a way. It's not like this thing where I'm trying to get out this anger or aggression. It's more of like, I don't know. It's like just getting in some sort of weird, zone i guess or i don't know that, i don't know how to explain it but that's what it feels like when we're playing it doesn't feel like we're you know trying to i don't know bring up summon any like inner demons or anything <laughs> like that yeah yeah or or you know navigate through some weird psychedelic trip or something you know right 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 are uh, you so you can... i'm sorry i've never done psychedelics before so i have no idea like wow. what that like how that feels to look yeah no nah, that that scares the crap out of me Dude, I mean, with the artwork, like the artwork, the artwork you have for Car Bomb is very psychedelic. Like that's kind of what people see when they're on it. So, so maybe uh-huh. you just have okay. like this natural knack for it. I don't know. You're you're seeing through what people experience. Well, people pay good money to see. You know. <laughs> huh. Okay, that sounds cool. Are you into any kind of thing like that? Do you have any vices? Uh, coffee, booze, beer. You know, anything like that. All the above, like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love beer, uh, coffee every day, uh, and that's about it. Really, I'm not really a 
huge pot smoker, but once in a while I'll I'll indulge if it's floating around. Um, I tend to tend to get really lazy and uncreative, which sounds weird because usually people smoke to like open up creativity. But for me, I just turn into like a complete dunk huh. and paranoid stuff. So like like you were talking about that story with edibles. Like the one time I did edibles, I was a zombie for like eight hours, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that again. Yeah, I mean, it. It. I guess you know, people are wired differently, and and you obviously, you know, like you you're saying, you you have all this. Like you're calming. Your music is calming to you. Like that's a different kind of wiring than most folks, and <laughs> and to them, like yeah. you know, like maybe yeah, the weed does. There is different strands and things you, you could look into to. Like I know some people say that one type makes you more active, the other one makes you more sleepy. I don't really know. I've tried them all, and they all make me feel the same. So <laughs> right. I don't really know yeah, anymore. Yeah, pretty much. Well, every time I, if I do that, the one thing I always do is just if there's music playing, I just stare into the speaker and listen to music. Because, I mean, I love the way music sounds oh, when yeah. I'm experiencing that. But that's about it. Like, as far as, like, trying to be productive, like I said, like, we all have day jobs, and then we're trying to do all this stuff with the band. It's like if I was – a pothead, nothing would get done. <laughs> <laughs> and when you said you love beer, so uh, are you like a craft beer nerd or you just like drinking beer? No, like I'm not really a craft beer guy, but I'm not like an American beer dude either. Like I don't like drinking Bud or Coors or anything like that. Mm. Like <laughs> Miller I don't like when it comes to that. <laughs> so like you know, Miller or any of that stuff. I like, um, like right now I'm drinking Montauk Wave Chaser. It's a IPA. That's really good. Nice. Yeah, it's out here on Long Island. Uh, I don't know. I guess they're in Montauk, which is at the very end of Long Island. But I haven't been there yet. But I would like to visit them and see what's going on with their facilities. Yeah, I love going but, uh, to breweries, yeah. man. It's such a nice uh, – yeah. the, the, like the community is nice, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. If we're playing near a brewer, like a like a brewery or uh, a place like that, like in a city somewhere, it's always amazing. Because they have great food, too, usually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it becomes a thing yeah. for people that are for touring acts to go and and uh, it's become like a really important part of a lot. Well, I guess if you're a drinker, but um, a lot of bands mm-hmm. drink and it's always cool to visit new cities and see what the local brewery is like out here. I know in um, uh, out here in uh, in Orange County, we have the Glass House venue, which, I, you know, I've seen Torch and a bunch of bands there. And in right oh, next to co- yeah, connected to the building is a, a brewery. So it's always that's always the meetup spot before the show. Sick. Yeah, man. That's cool. The new Torch record is great, by the way. It is. Admission is fantastic. And I saw him. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, I grew I grew up in Miami and we played shows with them when my band was active. And, uh, you know, we're, we're really close friends. And, you know, just to see them on like the Seth Meyer show, I was like a proud, you know, <laughs> like a sibling, like yeah. oh, hey, my brothers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, like long overdue for those guys, man. They've yeah. always been killing it. There's just, there's just such great songwriters. Like they're one of those bands that's always like heavier than everybody else, but they don't play like bullshit riff. They always, their songs are always songs, which is really cool. Yeah. Especially yeah. like as their records progress. And they always have the, the the most crushing bomb note, you know, explosions. <laughs> and then, but there's no screaming. Yeah. It's always pretty, no. Steve's pretty vocals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no. So there's that one EP they did in return where he screams a little bit. It's not, it's not a death metal scream, but it's more like a shout. Yeah. Those songs are killer. Like, um, I'm trying to remember that one song. In return, he screams a little bit. And there's that one super heavy song, like, later on in the ep that's really having these screams most of the time oh yeah in return is hilarious to me because i i think of um the death clock um did you ever watch death clock metal the, the metal, yeah, metal the there's a yeah. there's an there's an episode where they're singing happy birthday to someone and the gift is nothing it's like nothing, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh every time in that song when he's like i give you nothing i just immediately think of death clock <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Awesome. yeah but yeah it, it's it's Thanks. you know it's cool to explore the breweries and, and and stuff like that so it's cool to hear if you guys come out here to the west coast i'm uh i'll make sure to to take you guys to if they're nearby brewery hopefully oh yeah dude that sounds awesome yeah absolutely i mean we're not all drinkers in the band but mm. yeah well at least I'm you and i down. can go get a beer <laughs> exactly yeah cool dude well uh 
keep an eye on the social medias. What's the social media for you guys? Uh, just Car Bomb? Yeah, so uh, Car Bomb Official on Instagram. I think it's uh, Facebook.com slash Car Bomb. I think it's just Car Bomb is the handle on it. I don't have the app. I always look on it on the website just to see what people are posting. I always, then, I always uh, feel hesitant when I'm looking you guys up because I don't want people – I don't want to get flagged. <laughs> Yeah, I don't true, want to get flagged true. by the government. Like, <laughs> why are you looking yeah. up car bombs? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's bad, but uh, but it's yeah, it's, it's a horrible idea too. When we're uh, every time we have to drive through a tunnel or if we get stopped, you know, because usually vans with trailers get stopped at the tunnel, and they're like, "What are you guys?" And they're like, "Ah, we're musicians." Oh, what's in like, your oh, band? What's band? And then you're like, <laughs> you know, put your wrist out before you say it. <laughs> 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 Uh, car presents. I don't know something yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, we're Metallica. Yeah, yeah, we're Metallica. Oh man. So okay. So car bomb official. F- uh, follow them online so you guys can, when you announce the tour dates, you know, you can hopefully go catch you live. The album out on Holy Roar in the U- uh, uh, EU, September twenty seventh. Mordial. Mm-hmm. I got to tell you, man, uh, I love it. I heard the entire thing in one sitting. I couldn't stop. Again, it was the same effect from Meshuggah. I just I wanted to hear what was coming. It's like, I need to go, but I need to finish this now because it's too much. And, and it, it's too much to just break it up. Like If I did break it up, I had to just start over. I have to start over from the beginning. <laughs> Sick, man. I'm glad you did it. Yeah. I definitely pick up the album. Uh, check them out. And thanks again for your time, dude. I really appreciate it. Dude, no problem. It's a pleasure talking to you, Eddie, man. All right, man. We'll be in touch. You got it. All right, cheers. All right, dude. Later. Turning turtle!